So just like before, as we get into this video, I wanted to give a quick heads up. There's going to be spoilers for Red Dead Redemption 1 and Red Dead Redemption 2's story, as well as Red Dead Redemption 2's epilogue. So there's a lot that I touch on. It may not be exactly in depth per se, but if you don't want certain things spoiled for you as far as cutscenes or major plot points within both games, maybe skip on the video. And hey, if you're new here, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button down below for some more future Red Dead content. But for the rest of you, thank you. Enjoy the video. Who is the true villain of Red Dead Redemption 2? I want you to think about that. I'm sure as I ask that question, a lot of different characters, or one primary one, might pop into mind, with that being Micah. <laughs> Was you followed? No. Was you followed? I said no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is your problem? What is your problem, partner? You don't, uh, you don't look so good. What is wrong with you? Nothing wrong with me. I'm fit as a fiddle. And I inside you ain't. I'm just a realist, friend. And honestly, if you take a step back, many characters throughout this game have done horrible things and have been the main villain of someone else's story. To the Downs family, it's Arthur. To Dutch, it could be Colm. It could be Leviticus Cornwall. It could be Agent Milton. To the Wapiti Indians, it's Leviticus and the U.S. Army. If we take characters that we know ultimately end up dying, to the Braithwaites and Greys, it's the Vanderlyn Gang. To the majority of us, it's Micah and ultimately Dutch. But if Red Dead Redemption 2 is all about the Vanderlyn Gang, the story of Dutch Vanderlyn and how this gang ultimately fell apart, then an argument could be made that the gang itself is Dutch. In that case, it'd be my honor to join you. Excuse me, friends. I have an appointment to keep with. And if the story of this game is all about the life or the ending of the gang's life, can we really say Dutch is the true antagonist here? The ultimate villain? Or even Micah himself? Sure, you can say that Micah is an agitator and he's definitely an irritant, but he's an irritant from Arthur's perspective. From a possible false misunderstanding that the Vanderlyn gang is all about everybody within the gang and not Dutch as an entity. A while back I made a video on the channel asking why the major antagonists in the game aren't really seen and the majority of people commented because the antagonists aren't who we think they are. In that video I cite Agent Milton, I cite Leviticus Cornwall, and I cite Como Driscoll as the primary antagonists and we rarely see them. The primary responses in the comment section was, well that's because those aren't the antagonists. The antagonists we see almost 24-7. They're there within camp with us. And they say, it's Micah Bell and Dutch Vanderlyn. We ain't so good at doing scores anymore, Dutch. Are you feeling all right, Arthur? Well, Arthur, oh, Arthur needs to rest. But is it really them? I guess to answer this question, we should look at what the story of Red Dead Redemption aims to achieve. Because it's not really a story about Arthur Morgan. Don't get me wrong, I love him. He's my favorite protagonist of any video game, period. Watching his transformation as a highly respected and ruthless enforcer to, you know, to see him as a very complex character. He comes off one dimensional originally, and then you find out along the way he's got a love interest. He had a wife and a son at a time. He cares for others within the gang more deeply than anyone could ever have imagined him to be capable of. And we watch in utter sadness as this man who we spent the better half of 30 plus hours playing as start to wither away, become a shell of his former self, get sidestepped and even talked down to by people who wouldn't even dare look at him in the eyes at the start of the game. Why don't you shut up? Oh, all right. oh. <laughs> Who's this, your daddy? My daddy died. And this man, he killed him. What are you doing here? Leave the boy alone. Why'd you kill his daddy? You after his mama? <laughs> Stop bullying the boy. Get out of my business, mister. Leave the boy alone. Or what? Or I'll kill you too. You couldn't kill no one. Look at you, all ragged and sick and weak. Clear off, you goddamn hermit. Arthur and his transformation from the beginning of the game to the end is moving to say the least. It's thought provoking and tear jerking, but this isn't his story. 
If it was, the game would end when Arthur takes his last breath. And if the credits are really meant to roll, when he dies, then why not just reset us as Arthur, plop us back in the middle of the world, give us everything that we achieved as far as gear and outfits goes, and then just allow us to live our outlaw fantasy, continuing our days as Arthur, knowing that canonically speaking, as far as the narrative is concerned, this world saw Arthur die on that mountaintop. And you could say, by that logic, technically, Red Dead Redemption isn't about John either, but rather Jack. I would say between those two games, that's not exactly true. And it's not the same case because unlike the first game where there may be a few stranger missions you can complete as Jack and there's a revenge mission for him, there isn't an entire chapter or even two filled with a series of missions setting him up for his coming of age, so to speak. Red Dead Redemption 2, while there's a lot to be desired in its actual execution, still spends a significant amount of time trying to wrap up the characters from the main chunk of the story, and bridge the gap on John's side of events from the second game into the first. Is it trying to do too much? Probably, most likely, but that doesn't mean the focus isn't shifting from one protagonist to another. With this being a prequel after all, Rockstar had a lot of questions to answer in order to connect the first game in a very satisfying way, which they probably could have gotten away with if they chose to even opt out of giving us the epilogue altogether. But if Colm, Cornwall, Milton, or Dutch, even Micah aren't the villain per se, at least not the main villain, who is it? From my opinion, it's us, it's the world that we're living in, it's the turn of the century, civilization's grip on the wild untamed lands is starting to tighten, and the way of life, our way of life. The things we've grown accustomed to, how we stay afloat, how we rely on one another. Sure, the ways may be wrong, morally unjust, ethically questionable, but it's still a lifestyle that they, we, are known to have. And it's all being slowly suffocated to death. We can't stay here. That much is obvious. Where are we gonna run to? I mean, they chased us from the west, they chased us over the mountains, they ran us into the sea. All right, sir. Do you have my bag? Always, Dutch. But there's more than your back to worry about. The environment, the world, the people. It's a battle of two ways of life. The savage, outdated gunslingers, pitted against the sleek modern day enforcers of civilization. If the latter was to be placed in the form of a person, then I would argue it would be either Leviticus Cornwall, a ruthless business mogul that has a hand in nearly every corner of Red Dead Redemption's universe. On a smaller scale, it could by extension be Angela Bronte or even Agent Milton. Bronte represents the corruption of Saint-Denis after all, having his hands in illegal businesses such as the Braithwaite Moonshine Operation we have to smash during the chapter of Clement's Point. Yet, Bronte still had the Saint-Denis police force in his pocket. So. You walk into my city, stinking of shit and looking like this, and you come into my house before you have a bath and you tell me how to act? You ask me to show compassion. Have I not shown you almost infinite compassion already by simply allowing you to breathe in my presence? Agent Milton, on the other hand, or I guess the entirety of the Pinkerton Detective Agency was directly funded by Cornwall, with increased pressure to hunt Dutch down and eradicate him as a threat. Technically, even the Gray family can be considered not too different as they do control the law enforcement in and around the town of Rhodes. Principally, it's almost the same, just the Greys are stuck in their tiny bubble of the town of Rhodes. From the other side of the fence, the Vanderlyn gang, Dutch himself, embodies the brutal ways of life and Dutch romanticizing the outlaw lifestyle, appearing to be the savior of those who refuse or don't have a place in the new era of a blooming society. With Red Dead Redemption 2 set to be a prequel, really its main purpose was to just give us context and insight to the lives of John Marston and what his relationship was like to Dutch and his position within the Vanderlyn gang at large. Arthur was just created to be the perfect vessel to witness all of that. Realistically speaking, Arthur is never mentioned in the first game because truth be told, the original Red Dead Redemption had a high likelihood of being a one-off. If it flopped, oh well. If it does good, great. But if it does amazing, at least for what Rockstar was expecting, now they have to deliver on trying to establish a more solid game series. One that has some solid potential. And what would be an easier way than to just explore a little of John's past? 
If Rockstar ever chooses to do a proper remake, it would be ideal for them to rewrite some of the original material from the first game, because even though the game is written and presented in a way that doesn't immediately have glaring or questionable issues, the only major one being John's lack of mentioning Arthur, who is almost solely responsible for his second chance at life, outside of the Vanderlyn gang, if you look deeper, there's a lot more pressing issues and more to be desired when it comes to other characters and why they aren't properly explored in Red Dead Redemption 2. But going back to what I was saying, from Arthur's perspective, Micah is the villain. He's the one to place the entire blame of everything on. Towards the end of the game, he even starts to shift on placing the blame of Dutch losing his mind, so he would say it's the both of them. Dutch changed. Micah pushed him to change. What is going on, Dutch? What is happening to us? What's happening to you? From Arthur's perspective, from our perspective, Mike is a villain. If the story is all about the collapse of the Vanderlyn gang, well, that becomes a little bit more complex, but I still think it boils down to it being Micah. After all, Micah does the one thing that all the members kind of refrain from, and that's pushing Dutch to be more greedy. He's the yes man. He appeals to the side of Dutch that is eager to kill, is eager to rob, is eager to cause as much noise and chaos as humanly possible. And it leads us as players to question if that side of Dutch was always there, hidden underneath the surface, or that's just Dutch changing. Tired of being beat down by a system, by a world that doesn't want him anymore, that continues to paint him as the bad guy. A ruthless manipulator, a vengeful, cold-blooded killer, an outlaw just like the rest of them. And Dutch, always trying to stand out from the rest of the outlaws, just got sick and tired of it. Fine, I'm gonna be exactly what they're painting me to be, and I'm going to enjoy every second of it. I'll tell you what, you give me this ship, $10,000 and safe passage out of here, I'll let you live. <laughs> I'll do no such thing! <laughs> you sure? Good, I prefer it this way. I don't think there's any one true villain. I think it depends on what angle you're looking at. Like I said, some people brand Dutch as the villain. Others say it's Micah, which yes, but the reasons behind why it would be considered Micah are misinformed or diluted. Micah's branded the villain just because they don't like him. Just because they don't like how he treats Arthur. I'm not justifying it. Micah's still a piece of shit at the end of the day. I'm simply saying, if Mike is to be the villain, it would be because he had a critical role in pushing Dutch into more and more reckless behavior that arguably put the entire gang at increasing risk. And whether if Dutch is to be the villain or not depends on what the Vanderlyn gang is. Is the gang Dutch? In which case, no, the villain strictly is Micah. Is the gang all the people rallying underneath Dutch? Then yes, the villain arguably is more Dutch than Micah. Because I pointed out before, Micah does not control Dutch. When Angelo Bronte betrayed Dutch and lied to him about the trolley station out in Saint Denis being a lucrative and easy take, Arthur writes in his journal that nobody wants to talk to Dutch about Bronte, especially Micah. Micah refuses to mention Bronte's name because Dutch is erratic, he's volatile. He's looking for any and every reason to go after Bronte, to find some way to get this man even for playing him for a fool, for setting him up, for almost getting him killed. And that can be one of those tiny pieces of information where it can be said to not look too deep into it, but it's the only piece of information that we have that gives us an insight to what the relationship or dynamic is between Dutch and Micah. And I've said it before, Arthur's journal is a valuable resource when it comes to any type of information, any type of insight, not just from Arthur's perspective, but just the camp and other characters at large. There's so much that isn't shown or said through direct cutscenes or through mission dialogue. And you can have an idea from the mission dialogue or from the cutscene but when you look into Arthur's journal, it concretely solidifies what you had an idea of. And it's really with that small comment that more supports the idea that Dutch was always like that, or just through the events of the game. He starts being pushed more and more in that direction, and Micah's just the yes man. Yes, boss. You always figure it out, boss. You got it. You know I have your back, Dutch. Whereas before, he had the console and more reasonable mentality of Hosea and Arthur in his ear, now he has Micah who just doesn't care. He takes pleasure in the violence, in the chaos, and he cares only for a payday. But that's my take on who the true villain of Red Dead Redemption 2 is. I could have made this a 30 second video and just be like, it's Micah, or it's Dutch because X, Y, and Z, but I wanted to present this topic in a different light where you can have some type of discussion, some type of discourse of really who is the ones at fault. What angle are you really looking at here? 
to say, yes, this guy's the villain because of this. And I would love to have this conversation and discussion continued down below in the comments section. So please, let me know what you think. What's your perspective on all of this? Like always, thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, maybe consider subscribing. Or if you have any recommendations or suggestions on video ideas for the future, let me know. I have a lineup of videos coming out within this next week that people are throwing my way. So I'm always reading the comments and I'm always taking suggestions. But it's in the next video. I'll see you all then.